<laughs> That's funny. All right. So, Will, what's your experience with college onboarding? Yeah, well, I remember freshman year, uh, I got in, they brought all of the incoming class into this big, uh, it was the rec center, um, but they set it up like an auditorium. They got everybody in there and, you know, they had us, uh, they lectured us for a couple hours just talking about um, like school policies and like how to properly conduct yourself as a student there. Um, a lot of stuff, which, you know, I feel like it was pretty, like it was definitely really important to learn, but at the same time, I was like, I was getting there as a freshman and I'm all like, I'm just looking to meet new people and make friends there. And then there's all of these, like all of my classmates here right around me and I'm looking around and I'm like, Oh, these people like seem like they're cool, you know, when I'm walking in. Um, it's like, oh yeah, um, probably gonna get to meet a lot of people. Then like sit down, they start lecturing, and it's like that you had everybody right here, and I didn't get to like meet anyone. It was crazy. Like, isn't this the point to like get like plugged into college initially? Um, so I don't know, I thought that that was pretty weird. Um and then also just like with the environment of having being some like big like lecture type format and, like you know everybody is focused on like trying to meet people and like you know they just moved in they're like living on their own for the first time a lot of them felt like they weren't really paying attention like and I actually even knew one guy who was like oh yeah I'm not even gonna go to this and it was crazy because it's like this stuff is like from the school's perspective like really important that people know it but they're not like paying attention to it um they're not gaining that value uh and then also um, just because it's not being presented in a format that is really applicable to their needs uh and then also you have people who like they aren't even going to it so like i think the process of orientation has a, a lot of like power and potential because it's like you get this is the first uh, opportunity the university has to like tell you what it's about to be here and for you to like get your footing and like set the tone for your four years of college um but uh or in grad school like set the tone for grad school but uh, it felt like it was really missing the mark there and there was a lot that it was leaving on the table so do you have any ideas of how do you think it could have gone a little bit better? Yeah, well, uh, I think that just to, like for starters, if it were more engaging, that would be helpful. And, you know, that's not a knock on the people presenting because they did a good job presenting. Like they were uh, really energetic, enthusiastic. It's just that like when you're getting there, like you're sitting in some big auditorium and your mind's basically everywhere except what they're telling you. It's just not really an ideal format to be learning this in. Uh, and it's not personalized to you at all. Like, say there's something, like maybe there is some topic that like I'm an expert in. I could write like a paper in that, or at least I've heard that, or maybe like I've heard that speech like a hundred times. Then sitting through that it's like maybe there's one detail that I would have learned in there but I kind of like already passed it off as something that I wouldn't really um learn from anyways so it was kind of zoning out a bit um yeah um yeah what are your thoughts on the process what was yeah. your experience like so my experience was, I'd say, the orientation process at Florida State University, it was it was informative, and you could tell they definitely put a lot of effort into it. But from the students' perspective, we spent, I think it was basically a whole day, and it was like a two-day process, but one day in particular where all of us were gathered in the in one of the, the large auditoriums i think it actually might have been the where they play basketball 
and we were there for the whole day. So it was, it was a little, it was very long. I know that's, that's what I personally felt. And yeah. So by the, basically by the end, you were just very exhausted and it was a lot of information. Personally, I feel like it would, it's cause it's like, they're teaching very good stuff, but it's almost like the wrong time. So it seems like having a way for them to, to be able to give students information uh, like asynchronously. So like when you need it, cause there is a lot of valuable things that you do need. And so, but it's like, you need it, but it's also timing wise too. So it's like having the right information at the right time. And instead of having all the information at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. And for me, like with my experience, um, it was interesting to think about because it feels like Carlton did everything right, like everything that was in their control, they did well. Like it was really long and a lot of information, but like all of that information is stuff that you have to tell the students and there isn't, and like, how are you going to do it besides putting everybody in that room? And the people who presented did a really good job. It's just the constraints of the problem that made it so difficult. Like they, like, even if you optimize in every area, then it's still not really, or it's not even coming close to like what would be the ideal and what it theoretically has the potential to be. Uh, and yeah, uh, one of the, some, uh, one of my friends, um, a couple weeks ago was telling me he was going through an orientation process and he was like, Oh, there's just like so many meetings and they're so long. And like, now, like, I wish that I could just do this online, like complete some modules, read them, take some quizzes. And then like, there I am, like I'm done. And, um, just like, cause even the experience of needing to go into some room and have a lot of people and being presented to is really taxing, especially when you like, you just finished summer break and you did all this work to like move into your dorm room. And then you have all this stuff on your mind. It's like, okay, now I'm supposed to like listen to somebody. It's like, well, it would be like, I would so much rather be able to do something on my computer, have it be like tailored for me specifically, self-paced, because then I'm really learning the information better. Um, because I'm able to actually interact with it hands-on. I'm able to like actually read it for myself um, instead of like kind of it just being in the background or in the distance. Um, and then I'm able to go at whatever speed is best for me to do it. And I verify my retention of it by taking these quizzes. I think, yeah. Yeah, well, and then also back to the guy I heard of who um didn't uh, even attend um like at one you there was one university where um i heard of this guy who didn't even attend the things it's like well those really ought to be mandatory like they're intended to be mandatory oh. but i was like wait they don't have any way of actually knowing who's going to these things so like having the online modules would help with that as well um like purely from a like information and student experience perspective i think that that totally makes sense yeah you you definitely it's it's all like yeah all the intentions are for it's definitely to be mandatory but then there, there's so much that goes into it because from the college's perspective it's like yeah they got to not only try to set it up and then figure out those logistical issues like that how do you verify it definitely does seem like that could be uh streamlined through an online process and then, I mean, even like, so what about, what, what would a, a perfect, a perfect orientation student onboarding process look like to you? Yeah, well, uh, for me, I think that having that personalization is really key um, because when I'm able to actually do it um, on my own, 
then I'm able to retain that information better. Um, and it's just in this like closer format. It's like if I'm talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, then I'm going to be much more dialed in and it's going to be much more interesting to me uh, than if I, and it'll be much more interactive than if I'm just like, if it's like one on a couple, like tens of thousands or like one in a couple thousand. Um, so just that like personal connection versus like big lecture format. Um, and then, um, so just from being like engaged, um, but then of course it's not reasonable to have the one-on-one -on -one thing. So that's where the computer comes in, where if there were some type of way to online have this like self-paced um, and personalized uh, orientation program where I learn all that information. And because I'm going at it my own pace, I can like, and I'm only uh, have hearing the, like the questions that I have can be answered um, where like rather than needing to um, like hoping that I get called on or maybe they don't even have anybody asking like any ability to ask questions because there's so many students who are there. <laughs> uh, they just don't have the time. For, it's not feasible. Um, yeah. So I think that like personalization uh, is really key for me uh, in terms of being able to, yeah, it's just uh, for me, that would be, uh, and I've heard uh, a lot of other college students talk about how like, that type of thing they'd find much more engaging and they would much prefer it. And then another like great benefit as a side effect is then I'm going to have more time to interact with other people. Like if I could do this on my own, then say like a week before I arrive at school or, you know, during the summer or something, I do this orientation process on my computer. And then I get to school during that, what would be orientation week, they can go, the school could go all in 100% on meeting new people and getting connected. So then like, so, and I feel like that's the perfect time to do that sort of thing. Like I arrived at school and I was like, okay, I want to be like meeting people, uh, like figuring out what clubs I'm going to be a part of, like really diving in, getting like engaged in the community. And then, uh, like, you know, you get to college, you don't know anyone who goes there. Uh, so if, so it gives them uh, so much more time to work with and so much more opportunity to focus on really letting you bond with other students uh, and meet other people. I feel like that would pay dividends later on in terms of just like uh, students feeling like they really belong at the school. And, you know, then instead of making your friend group maybe after the first month or so or still like, or taking some time to meet some people or, um, you know, needing to like a lot of people, their primary friend group for the first couple of years or maybe all of college is the people on their floor in their freshman dorm. And like, so it's great because those people have that proximity and it's a good place to meet people. But at the same time, it seems like there aren't that many people who early on are having these friend groups that are really across multiple places. It seems like uh, and that would indicate to me that students are kind of lacking for early, easy ways to connect with other people. Yeah, that, that completely makes sense. It really seems like a great time. Yeah, you're able to get all that learning done with beforehand, online. And then, yeah, focus on the in-person, more social aspects of the orientation process. And yeah, really enabling that to happen and maybe like getting involved in clubs and all those types of things, the more exciting. And at the end of the day, yeah, I think for the college and for the students, I think that really benefits everybody because 
it's huge. I mean, everybody, everybody says it like first impressions are very important. And in a way I'd say orientation is really the first impression. And so that, that could really have a, a big effect either negative or positive. So it's, it makes sense that you would definitely want to try to make that positive. And I really think if you're, if the with orientation just being, Oh, wow, that was actually a negative experience. That's, that's something that's very, that could really harm a school in the, in the long run and really start off on the wrong foot and perhaps, yeah, really get, instead students can be very engaged from the beginning, get involved and stay involved on campus throughout their, their time. Yeah. And how difficult do you think it is for these faculty and staff members of the school to be designing and presenting these orientation materials to students? Because this is, uh, for a lot of people, not their full-time job. And for a lot of them, maybe they only do this type of thing once a year. Uh, and even if it is their full time job and they do it many times a year, um, what do you think it's like being in that position? Yeah, that that's a great question. I think it, it really seems like that. It's a very important job and I'm sure it's it's very fulfilling, you know, being able to really help those students get off on the right foot. But it definitely seems like that that could it takes I'm sure it takes a lot of time and yeah from a if it's like a staff member who's used to to doing a lot of the behind the scenes who isn't really used to lecturing and creating coursework I'm sure it's it's a bit of a challenge and probably a bit distracting from them where it takes away from their normal thing and then they're maybe expected to be doing two things at once and I'm sure that could be very overwhelming and makes it even more difficult and, and yeah, so it really does. It's I'm sure it's it's a lot, and I would really like I would love to be able to talk to even to more more stakeholders who are in that position to further understand. And another thing is, I'm sure it seems like not all colleges are the same in terms of structure, in terms of students, in terms of staff and faculty responsibilities. So I'm sure it it varies, but uh, that it's I think that that's a great question. Do you do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well. To me, it seems like uh, it's really uh, probably quite fulfilling to be able to work with all these new students, but it seems like they might be in a similar situation to the students on that front, where, you know, they're helping out the students, they're presenting them with this information, but, you know, it might help them connect better with the students and make a better impression. And the students would probably get more out of it if they were able to have it in more of a social context. Uh, as it seems like the actual preparation of materials and then like practicing the presentation and doing the presentation is like that could get on the end of being more tedious work. Uh, sure. And, you know, having them do it like so often and so repetitively but then repeating the same work every single time. Uh, just to me as a computer science guy, a software guy screams out to me like, hey, automate, automate. <laughs> uh, like this is a great opportunity. Uh, and then uh, it's, yeah. And then what's really great is that uh, I think if you automate it, then you could take that perspective of having the, staff members like really getting to help out students and feeling connected to them really amplify that um, because I feel like they the work and the um, rewards and benefits to the students from that work of presenting isn't nearly as great as it would be if they were able to have this more like social context surrounding it uh, rather than an informational lecture context. I agree. I think a, a focus on connection, that would really be where, so yeah, it's like there is, it's probably 90% tedious work, 10% fulfilling, or 5% even. Because yeah, I'm sure there's, it's kind of like a, an iceberg where you don't, only the tip, you see the tip and that's probably nice. And so yeah, that'd be very nice if they were able to, to you know, take, just get the good part and kind of automate and or outsource 
the parts that that isn't really there. It's really not their full time responsibility. Like when they got hired, they they're wearing a lot of hats, doing a lot of things, but their real specialty is and their real main focus could be on other tasks. And it really seems like it's a it's a good area for automation and outsourcing. Right. Yeah. And then um not only would they have the if they um if it doesn't make sense for them to uh, like if they uh, decide that they don't want to keep working on that and they'd prefer like with the orientation and would prefer to do their uh, normally scheduled tasks, then they'd totally be able to do that. But then also if they really like that opportunity to be uh, speaking with students and, you know, um, setting, helping to set them off on the right foot, making that connection, then they'd be able to do that on a much more personal level too because they wouldn't have to do it in the context of like, okay, like I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to help you out. But first I need to like, or, but the only way that I could do that, that is through telling you like all this stuff for a few hours. That, yeah, that completely makes sense. It's probably, yeah, instead of it being a, cause yeah, orientation could, I'm sure it's, it could be stressful on both sides of the coin. It could be stressful for students not knowing what they need to know, a little worried. Oh, like, what do I need to know? This is all so new, so new. And now there's a ton of information coming at me all at once. And then also from the faculty side where it's, yeah, instead of if they have, they're, they're worried about, oh, setting up everything, like is all the lectures in order is because it's, if it's not done, which really seems like it would be helpful. Yes, if, if that's done beforehand and they know everything's good and they set everything in place where they know so then they can just enjoy and can really be kind of take the stress out of it and just have the good parts. Right. Right. Um, and then, uh, also just, um, on that, like it really enables the schools to be more authentic, I think, because Carlton, for example, they, with a small student body, they had, you know, around 500 people in my graduating class. Um, and for them, so with us in the orientation, that was like, they packed a bunch of people into like one room they were presenting to us. And that was really different from the college experience that I got because all of the professors with small class sizes, we had like 30 people was a pretty big class for me. Uh, in the context of my other classes. Uh, so we had like, oftentimes we'd, like we normally have under 20 person classes. So we'd get to know all of the people in the class pretty well, really connect with the professor. Uh, and that was, that contributed. I think that that like beyond the, like for starters, the professors are all fantastic, both at teaching and like, they're great people, um, but uh, but also having that smaller class size enables you to really get the benefits of that, and I think is a big factor. I think both the professors and the small classes combine to let them be the number one college ranked college for teaching. Wow! Um, so, um, yeah. So having all of the best teaching and having the like personal connections be like such a part of big part of like what makes Carlton awesome and cool uh, and having such a great school community it just was kind of weird that they didn't have any option to make the orientation more mirroring that image yeah that that's very interesting yeah it's like yeah you might as well have the have the, the first impression be just as good as the rest of the experience because that could really set things off on the right foot. Have you looked at, into any research or statistics surrounding student orientation? Come yeah, on. well, uh, I read a study uh, the other day that was talking about student retention. And they, so there was this one school where they tried um improving their orientation process um, and they just made it online in a like very very rudimentary way um, 
So it was like basically just flip the mode to online, not didn't even make it that much more engaging. So like very small change, but they saw the retention rate as a flow through effect of that um, increasing the rate increased by 10%. Wow. I think a little over. Wow. Um, yeah. So for them, super meaningful um, on the increase in and retention rate is something that's like such a big factor. Like that's somebody actually making a decision, like a big decision to like stay versus go somewhere else or drop out. Like that's huge. And being able to directly chalk it back just to this, like really, we're talking like a really small change. They didn't even have like quizzes. It wasn't even like personalized for the students. It was just like an online version. Um, and then you have this huge boost in retention from students being able to um, like really get um, like from all of the incremental changes in personalization and efficiency um, and being able to, and I think also just being on your computer um, as opposed to being in a lecture hall uh, for something like orientation can be uh, really valuable. Um, yeah, so then like I can only imagine how impactful it would be if they had some like actual software that did this for them um, where they, because that like there are some, like there is some reason to believe that that school's an outlier. Uh, they had a like lower retention rate. It was about 70%. So mm. they had a lot of room to increase. Um, but like, I would expect that to be far more than offset um, by having some software that was designed to do this. And, you know, as I was saying earlier, like having modules, quizzes, um, like really personalizing it for the students and for the universities. Um, and then also opening the door for more personal connection opportunities um, of like meeting people in small groups, um, like in their first week during what would otherwise be orientation. I would expect, like, given the number of people that I've had, people have specifically told me, like, oh, yeah, it would be great if we had this type of thing. So, um, yeah, so I would expect the retention increase to be um, substantial. Uh, and, yeah, it's, like, given, like, combining uh, the findings of that study with what I've heard, like, personally from other students. So... Uh, we have some really impactful stuff that we're talking about here. Wow, that that's really awesome, man. And because that, so if that, it really seems like, I mean, obviously, so colleges they they make their money through tuition. I think or that's at least a portion of their their revenue, solid portion. And so it seems like, yeah, the more you could re increase the retention, that's really helping their bottom line and. I mean, that's think about how like in a on a world scale impact keeping keeping kids in school, more people graduating, like that's really, I mean, that's life changing. Right. Well, and then um, for public universities, they get some money through grants um, from the state or um, potentially from the city, maybe some national grants depending on the university. But if you're like in some form of government, you're giving out grants to different schools and you see this one school like implemented some software that increases their retention rates. Like more people are staying there, more people are graduating, then like you're gonna, like, that's gonna excite you. You're going to want to like incentivize that. You're going to try to fund that. Um, so from like from all ends, it's really valuable um, for the, like definitely for the school side, um, definitely for the faculty and staff with the work that they have to do. Um, and then for the students, of course, uh, 
like as we've experienced firsthand. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it's, it completely is. It's, yeah, it's, it's really, really an important topic. And yeah, one of those, one of those things that I'm sure could be overlooked potentially, but definitely, like, but the importance of it is, is very, very large. It could really have a, a big impact on a variety of stakeholders, like you mentioned. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. It's very interesting to, to dive into. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then I think there's so many like benefits that, and so much value from something like that, that extends uh, beyond what we've covered and beyond just the simple like monetary value of retention rates um, and the like obvious intrinsic value of like student satisfaction. But there's also um, like there's, I think the student satisfaction is like even deeper than is immediately obvious because these like sure students are going to enjoy it on the surface level because it's like oh yeah this is like more fun to do like this yeah. is actually enjoyable or like this is enjoyable to complete rather than like oh this is a drag i have to like go through this thing um but it also has that long-term effect where it's like student like a lot of students um especially when they're starting off like they're in a new place away from home it might take a while to find a sense of belonging in the school they might not feel like um they should be there a lot of students uh, suffer from imposter syndrome at universities um and then just all of these like roadblocks that um, limit their ability to really get the most out of their experience and really thrive uh, as students and um, have that drive them through their college career and really springboard them into their um, post-college career. Um, so being able to really uh, get connected early on with people who are similar to you um and like learning from people who are different from you and just like that goes such a long way in terms of feeling like you know people feeling like you're at home uh feeling like you're a part of the school i think that yeah i completely completely agree there it's it really seems like it's it can really help springboard and and just yeah really set them on on the right track so do you have any how about do you have any tips and advice for incoming students that are going through an orientation process yeah well um if they're using traditional orientation um practices then like i know that it will like every like i've never heard of an orientation process that is entertaining or like engaging or short like they're <laughs> all every single one i've heard of is like long boring uh, like not interesting but like i'd say to like before and after try to meet as many people as you can uh, but really like outside of it it's hard to do that so like really all of the free time you have outside of orientation you should be trying to um like meet people like everyone else is in the same situation as you so like at first it could be a little intimidating to just go up to random people and introduce yourself but like they're in the same exact situation as you so they're like by far on average they're gonna be like super happy that you went up to them introduced yourself <laughs> and it goes both ways just like if somebody came up to you and was like, hey, like, hey, I'm Will, like, what's your name? <laughs> got to talking, like, that's how they're going to feel if you go up to them. It's like, it's hard to meet people initially because part of it is you just have to go out there and introduce yourself to some people um, the way things currently stand. But uh, yeah, and then I'd say to uh, just like, although like a lot of the 
information, like just because it's in such a like strict format and it's so long, it can be hard to really reap any benefit from the information presented. But they do have some valuable stuff in there. There's a reason that the that like every university does these things because there's valuable information they need to tell you. Um, yeah, so uh, that's most of my advice for them. What about you? Yeah, that's that's definitely what I'd say as well. I'd say so for the orientation part specifically. Hope for the best. Hope that hope that your your college has thought through the process and not just tried to jam everything into a two day process in person process. And but yeah, on a more general level, I'd say yeah, try to enjoy. Like you said, I the best part about it is going to be engaging with your your peers. These are the people who you're going to be with, or and you know, so you really want to meet them, engage. I, I, it's a really a great opportunity to get involved in clubs, get involved in different activities, so you can kind of orient yourself into what you want to do on campus. And I'd say definitely at that first try a lot of different things. It doesn't hurt to try a lot of different things to kind of figure out what exactly it is you want to get involved with yeah awesome yeah trying out a lot of new stuff <laughs> super awesome <laughs> all right all right will do you have any final words um no i think that we um covered a lot of good material and um yeah I'm excited. Like I think that the orientation process um, has a lot of room for improvement. It's something that's intrinsically um, beneficial, but feels like there's so much missing. There's like it's there's so much potential for it. Like I look at it and I'm like, this could be so great uh, for like so valuable for students, so valuable for the school. Um, as a derivative of serving the students well. Uh, like students could be so well served. Uh, and that's just not happening right now uh, at any university. Like even when just as a constraint of the current um, technology available to people. So, you know, having some software that could really do a good job with this would be tremendous. I completely agree. It seems like some good orientation software could really be a game changer for your school and it could be cheaper, faster, and better way of serving your students and having students serve you as well. All right, Will. Awesome. Great talking, Adam. Great talking. <laughs> See you next time. Until next time. All right. Uh <laughs>